All right, let's talk a little bit about anemometers. We don't want to get an anemometer confused with a manometer. A manometer is what you take static pressure and manifold gas pressure readings with. An anemometer is what you read the velocity of air either going out of a duct or coming out of a grill or register. Now, when we talk about velocity here in the United States, the unit of measurement for airflow velocity is typically feet per minute. So we're reading the speed of the air coming out, but that is not giving us the volume of the air coming out. Uh, so we have to plug that into a very simple formula to convert feet per minute to cubic feet per minute. But let's first talk about the two types of anemometers. This is a hot wire anemometer, and this is the, it's a smart probe, it's the Testo 405i, so this works with the Testo app. Um, and the way a hot wire anemometer works is in this probe, has a small heater and you're going to insert this anemometer into a duct and as the air passes across that sensor it's going to cool off that heater this sensor reads the how much that heater is getting cooled off it converts that into a measurement and it tells you what it is uh, now it's important to understand that when you're using a hot wire anemometer and you're inserting it into a duct uh, a run of duct work that you can't just take one reading You've got to traverse the ductwork so that you can take a series of readings. So you're probably going to drill a hole in the side of the ductwork, and then you're also going to drill a hole in the bottom or the top of the ductwork. And you're going to take a series of readings, and that's what these little notches are here are for. And you're going to run it up like this, and you're also going to run it up across like that. Uh, and then you're also going to take some additional readings to get these corners. So on the Testo app, they'll show you how to properly traverse the duct. So you got to take an average. You can't simply just take one reading because you could have a whole lot of velocity coming in the middle of the duct, but it could be slowed down across the sides because it's dragging against the side of the duct. So if you just took a reading in the middle, you'd come up with a really high velocity, but that's not the true average of the air coming across the duct. So always traverse your duct. You can find out more how to do that uh, by just going on either Testo's app or just Googling how to properly traverse a round or a square duct. Here we have a different kind of anemometer. This is called a vein anemometer because it has that little pinwheel right there. And you typically use a vein anemometer if you're trying to read air velocity or take airflow readings coming out uh, of an outlet or getting pulled into a grill. So typically you're going to read that in a supply register or a return grill. Now it's really important when you're taking these readings to again average the outlet. So you just don't want to stick in a one spot and get a feet per minute reading because that's not going to be the average of what it is elsewhere in that register. Now you want to uh, take a traverse reading. So using the app, it's going to start a clock and during a time period of a one minute, two minutes, really whatever you want to set it at, you're going to start traversing this duct. Now it's very important that you keep this anemometer flat. You don't want to angle it because that's going to alter the speed of this pinwheel. And when you're done taking an average reading, this device is going to sense the speed that that pinwheel was turning through that time. It's going to convert that to an average feet per minute. The longer time period that you're averaging the duct, the more accurate you'll be. The shorter time period, the more assumptions that uh, that sensor is going to make. Now, again, it's really important to slowly traverse going back and forth. Don't spend too much time in one area or the next. And what you'll find is that in some areas of your traverse, you're going to read more velocity than others. And that's okay. That's kind of giving you an idea of the pattern that the air is coming across this, re this register or through the grill. But uh, in order to convert that to CFM, that requires a different formula. That's what we're going to talk about next. Once you've determined what your velocity of the air, your average velocity coming through that duct is, the next step is to convert that to your volume of air, CFMs, cubic feet per minute. And there's a difference between the velocity of the air and the volume of the air coming out of that duct. And I'll illustrate. If you get hit by a baseball being thrown at you going 70 miles an hour, it's going to hurt, but it's probably not going to kill you. But if you get hit by a Mack truck, going 70 miles an hour, it will absolutely kill you. What's the difference? They're both going 70 miles an hour. The difference is the baseball doesn't have a lot of area. The Mack truck does. So it's not enough to be able just to measure the feet per minute of air going through a duct. We've got to factor in the area of the duct and convert that to cubic feet per minute or CFMs. And here's how you do it. 
for a circular duct, I just suggest Googling it. Google what is the area of a 12 inch duct or whatever the diameter of your duct is. And it'll give that number to you. It's probably gonna give you that area in square inches. Here's where you gotta be really careful. You've gotta convert that square inch area into square feet. And that's a very simple formula that you plug that into. You take your square inches, you divide it by 144, and that gives you square feet. Now you can take that square foot area and multiply it by your average velocity, and that gives you CFMs. The same principle applies if you're taking a velocity reading through a square rectangular outlet. Uh, you got to convert that to CFMs, and the first thing you got to do is to measure your dimensions here. So this is a six by 10 boot, six inches by 10 inches. So that's 60 square inches. But again, we've got to convert that to square feet. So we have to divide that number by 144. When we divide uh, 60 divided by 144, we get 0.42. That is the square feet area of this boot. We can then multiply our area by our feet per minute, and that gives us our cubic feet per minute. But wait, there's one other uh, factor that we need to consider. Anytime you add a grill or a register into the equation, you've got to understand that the louvers and damper blades all cause an obstruction to airflow because they take away from the free area of that boot or that opening. So this is a six by 10 boot, but by the time you add up all the space that these uh, little blades and louvers occupy, the boot turns into something a lot smaller. And so there's a correction factor that you have to apply there, and every manufacturer is going to publish what that correction factor is for that model uh, register. Now, if you're on a service call and maybe you don't know uh, what that correction factor is, a common standard correction factor is 0.75. So it's always going to be a number that's smaller than 1.0, and usually it's around 0.75. Some are a little bit less. Some of the uh, the more decorative louvers and registers that have a lot of metal or other obstructions is going to be really low correction factors. Other ones that are more performance-based, the manufacturer is going to try to, re to make that correction factor as close to 1.0 as possible. So to recap, if we have a 6x10 boot, the first thing you've got to do is know what your starting area is, which is 6 by 10, that's 60 square inches. Then you have to convert that to square feet. So you got to divide that number by 144, and that gives you 0.42 square feet of area that that boot occupies. Then you've got to multiply it by the correction factor, which we're just going to use the standard one for this register, which is 0.75. So 6 times 10 gives you 60, divided by 144 to give you square feet. Multiply that by 0.75, correction factor, and that gives you 0.315. That is the area that this 6x10 boot with a grill on it occupies. So if you're worried that you're going to forget all the math we just did, don't worry, that's okay. Uh, if you use an app like the Testo app, there's a lot of online tools out there. They're going to step you through the process. What I like about the Testo app is it's very user-friendly. You connect your tool. It's going to step you through the whole process. It's going to ask you what your dimensions are, what your correction factor is, and it's going to step you through traversing and taking your readings so that you get a good final result. So these are just the principles. It's a little bit of the math behind it, but don't worry about it. Use the app. Make good use of the technology and the internet, you'll do just fine. The other important thing to remember is to manage your expectations. When we do residential and light commercial air balancing, air readings, we are not shooting for laboratory quality or clean room quality uh, readings. The instrumentation, even though there's a lot of technology that goes into this instrumentation, our methods can be very flawed. Um, and so it's really important to understand that you may be 10 to even maybe 15% off on your readings, but that's okay. When we're typically doing diagnostics and solving comfort problems, we're looking for 
qualitative results, not so much quantitative. So yes, you are quantifying your airflow, but you are looking for before and an after. So uh, manage your expectations, invest in good instrumentation, learn how to use it, learn the math and the principles behind it. It's just another tool in your tool, in your tool bag for diagnosing and solving real comfort energy indoor air quality problems.